Welcome back to the GORUCK Show. I'm Blaine. With your daily belly. Get a little bit of bad belly, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry, so if I just bolt at some point in the middle of the show or at any point during the show and head for the bathroom, just continue on without me, I'll, tr I'll try to turn my mic off. Yeah. And we'll be fine. It'll be okay. It's not a problem. We still have music kicking. That's good. I got it. It's the yeah. intro. Don't, don't sweat it. Is that Smashing right. Pumpkins though? It was Smashing Pumpkins, yeah. yeah. It's, it's probably more like one of my Pumpkins. least favorite songs of theirs, but that's okay. So one of your least favorite Smashing Pumpkins songs relative to like all of the rock songs were to fall. So interestingly enough, the more that you love something, the more critical you are. Oh, right? like your sons? And so I <laughs> not, to, not to get deep right hey, away here. well, not to get deep. <laughs> so it's sort of one of those things where I would rather listen to a lot of other, anything by someone else than the worst of someone that you love. Because you're just sort of disappointed. Disappointment is a very powerful thing, both to feel and to share. So try to do that sparingly. So we were talking before we started the camera about Billy Corgan and Smashing Pumpkins and yes. how like big rock stars and like, do you have, do you, have you earned the right at some point just to kind of do what you want? Do you have to keep being a big rock star if you don't really want to? And he made like a piano solo album here recently. Yeah. But then you were saying he also still wants to be a big rock he star. He also still wants to create relevant music. I mean, Smashing Pumpkins reunion tour, they're back in the studio literally right now. Billy and Jimmy at a minimum are back in the studio right now. Original lineup, super rumored for stadium tours or whatever the equivalent is for next year. I'll, I'll be at at least one or two. And I mean, look, we're all complex. So, you know, I mean, wanting to do something that's more relevant is probably a, a human emotion. Yeah, I think so. Especially, I think once you've had a taste of it, it's got to be hard to yeah. be, to digress into irrelevance if you've been at the top of the mountain or whatever you want to call yeah. it. Yeah. Anyway. I think it's easier to stay relevant as a company than it is as an artist. For sure. Artists, so For sure. artists it's sort of time and place, right? The, the world has to kind of validate you in yeah. a way. And a business is, there's a little bit more process, right? There's a, there is magic and, and magic, magic turns into, hey, the world. So when there are millions and millions of people rucking, it will be the process of a little bit of magic thrown in, right? But now, once people are already rucking, and Go Ruck is known as the place that, that at a minimum, jump-started that from a civilian perspective, right? Yeah. Then, once that's established, I mean, once Nike established running, Nike became Nike. And now, they're on a sort of high ground of sorts, and they're a business, which means you have more cash, you have more people, you have more oomph. People return your calls. You can do lots of deals. If you're smart, you can do better deals. I mean, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? I mean, this is, this is how the fat cats become the fat cats, is they sort of uh, establish the high ground and then they figure out a way to work with the other fat cats to stay on the high ground. Because that's the goal in that business, to stay on the high ground. And for, for some of the artists, Not maybe that's their goal. Not necessarily the fat cat with all the connotations, but certainly mm -hmm. to stay on the high ground and to keep growing. And artists, yeah, it's a little different. Sure. So speaking of high ground, one of the things we want to talk about today was sort of mm. nice segue, right? Was to um, kind of recap. We just got back a couple days ago from our trip out to the Grand Canyon. So it's actually the low ground, I guess, and not the high ground. We were going downhill for the, at least the first half. Um, we talked about it a little bit on the show over the last few weeks, but we finally went and did the trip. Had a good time. We made it back with all ten fingers and toes, and none the worse for the wear. Sore. <laughs> My calves are still just a little tight, but I'm almost fully recovered. I think. Uh. Yeah. So the, I think the most important part, maybe we start with the most important part of the trip, which is the people, always the people, right? So the scenery was beautiful. We beat up America. the gear. Yeah, we beat up the gear a little bit. That it's was great. Fine. Vegas. Beat up some, whatever. Uh, there's this great pair of shoes I wore, right? Not a single hot spot on my foot. It was awesome. That's nice. It's always less pleasant when you're out there dreading the next step because your yep. feet are screaming at you. Yep. But, um, but what about the people? So you, you knew a couple of us going out there, but not a lot of us. You'd met, actually you'd met probably two thirds of the guys that were going, at least met. I, I'd only not, so Jimmy and Gus I had not met before. But right. I knew JJ and Ben and. The two guys from Shreveport, Bomber. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so we went, just, I mean, just so everyone, for context, I guess we went, Jason and I went, Andy came with us, and then um, Ben Bunn from down in Tampa, yep. a buddy of mine who's, who's been up CrossFit. here. Yep, Cigar City CrossFit. He came. 
And then um, I, I love Ben Bunn. I mean, the dude's just awesome. rolling entertainment, if nothing else, right? I mean, you yeah. know, you've got a, a variety yeah. show. If, but but it's, I mean, there's people that are sort of all jesters and no substance, no judge, mm-hmm. and he's not like that at all. There's there's a lot of layers. Oh yes, he's, are, he's a complex individual. Yeah, I mean, so yeah. there, there's people that are really funny. You know, they tell fart jokes and you laugh, and they're sort of all jesters, right? Yeah. But if you're gonna if you're gonna really be able to sustain it, there's only so many fart jokes you can tell that are funny. I mean, he's he's sort of got he's got both. Yeah, he does, and he's just got such an interesting story now because he's like come out of the army, he owns this CrossFit gym, and he's got a semi-famous girlfriend, maybe real famous. I'm sorry, I don't mean to insult her. I'm not gonna name names, but you know, he's got a lot yeah. of interesting stuff going on that just sort of, you know. Some of it he deals with very confidently, she's lucky. and some of it I'll go on the record. She's lucky. <laughs> yeah. Who else is she going to do? He's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So Ben came with us, and then JJ Pinter, who's the executive director at Team Red, White, and Blue. So he's got a, Love you know, JJ. very close connection, <laughs> and he was my roommate in college, and like kind of best friend and business partner, and all that stuff. So you know, we know him really well. And then uh, Gus, who was a guy on my ODA, he was my team Fox on my team. Him and I spent a lot of very intimate time together at the Firebase. Been through a lot. We've, you, yeah, that's. I think we could almost leave it at that. We've been through yeah. a lot together, uh, and then Jimmy Campbell, who's also from Shreveport, um, my West Point classmate. We served together in the first Cav. Jimmy was one of those first Cav guys that, like, he took the tour of Iraq in 2004 and like only the worst places. So he was like in Baghdad, sort of permanently stationed, but then his unit got tagged to go down to the battle in Najaf in uh, August of 2004, and I was like fighting through the mausoleum and doing all that stuff. And then they did such a nice job doing that that they got requested to go out for the Battle of Fallujah in November of 2004. And so the, the 12 or 13 months that he spent in, in Iraq were high adventure. He was scout yeah. platoon leader. It was... By the way, loved the Marines in Fallujah. Yeah. Just like singing their praises. I mean, the yeah. hard part is the Army and the Marines talking together it gets hard, different frequencies and all that stuff. But yeah. just had nothing but awesome things to say, which is... It's always cool, you know? There's always this sort of rivalry, but when you... When you find yourself in the thick of things, it, it's yeah, it's amazing it's how, sim- how similar yeah. you really are, right? Yeah, yeah, you get really similar, really, really fast. You you are long lost friends. Yeah, we're shooting that direction. <laughs> they're shooting this direction. Yep. So we're all friends Semper now. Five. Yeah, there you go. So it was just just an awesome collection of dudes, and I think just for a little bit more context, um, of the six guys, of the six of us that went out on the trip, five of us have three kids. So Ben being the exception, he, he might have 10, but I don't know if, if, where they are spread out around the world. <laughs> three kids that we know about. <laughs> yeah. But five of us have three kids that we know about and support. And um, that it was just an interesting dynamic to just follow the conversation a little bit because it would go everything from sort of your fart jokes and beer and whatever, like good old times. It was kind of like the Go Ruck show. It was a little bit, yeah, a little hard to follow, <laughs> wide variety of topics. You never know what you're going to get next though. There's no, but it, it was like, it was like work, military, kids, marriage. At one point guys were giving me advice on like whether I should get a vasectomy or not and how that goes and how much my insurance will cover. And it's like, man, we really, I can really talk to these guys about anything. Yeah. Which is, which is kind of nice because, you know, you have friends and you have coworkers and people you spend a lot of time with, but <laughs> it's rare to be in the bottom of the canyon talking about a vasectomy with a, with a bunch of guys, yeah. you know, but hey. 24 hours in a day is a long time, you know? <laughs> you got you to gotta fill that time a little bit. That's a great point, by the way, though, because, you know, I think when you're in just the rhythm of normal life, kind of in the grind or whatever, days go by pretty quickly. You look up and it's Friday again before you know it, or depending on how your life is, you look up and it's Monday again before you know it. I mean, I think for guys like you and I, we're fortunate in that I look up and it's Friday again before I know it, right? Week's gone. Gosh, I can't wait for Monday. By Sunday night with the kids, <laughs> thank God it's Monday again when I wake up. I just cannot. You're like the opposite of a sales guy. You're like looking forward to Monday. You're not gripping at the terror of having doors slammed in your face. But um, but when you're out there with nothing else to do, no cell phone coverage, no TVs, no no nothing, no real obligations other than to walk and like pitch a tent. 24 hours is kind of a long time, yeah, just to ruck. Um, the other thing is, like, you're not, we're not sleeping well. It's freezing. You're laying on the ground. No one's really sleeping that well. Some One, stud didn't even sleep in the tent. Yeah. <laughs> and ended up hopping under the <laughs> undercover because it started yeah. to rain. Real True brilliant. True story. Yeah. True story. Yeah. My favorite part of that is where you were sleeping, if you guys couldn't guess, Jason was the stud sleeping outside because we had, we had two <laughs> two-person tents and seven guys. So the math, and three of the guys are over 6'3". So, the, you know, 
The math didn't work out. Jason, always the tough guy. I was like, I'm good. Because he was using Nick's sleeping bag, which is like sub-zero rated. He's like, oh, I'll sleep outside. I'll take the hit. He's like, he's acting like he's in like Survivor Man or something. He's making himself a little bed of leaves. You know, oh, this should be good insulation or whatever. Picking the rocks out. About an hour into sleeping, it starts to rain. <laughs> Jason's doing the caterpillar inchworm hopping in his bag, trying to get underneath some yeah, shelter. I did, I did do that. Yeah. Initially, also, behind the bush you were sleeping again, at one point I looked up and there was an 11 point mule deer buck yeah. that was like six feet from us and was just sitting right there. I mean, that's. So I stayed up for additional hours because I heard them, there were three deer rustling about. And I, I'm always planning worst case scenario, always. It goes through my head. I mean, when I say always, I mean always, right? Someone comes over to my house, I'm thinking, what if they have a plan to kill me, right? <laughs> Right? I mean, Does it, me too? Does that include me and no, like no, Lee? Once, and... once you sort of know someone, okay. it's different, but someone new or whatever, right? A new babysitter? Yeah, I'm talking about you, you know? And so it, it sort of turns into I'm, I, these three deer are right there and they're, they're feet away. I'm thinking, how is this going to work if they decide to run this way and trample over my face? Because these are mule right? deer too. These aren't like little like key deer no, in Florida. Huge. Like the so big, start huge mule deer. rocks at them. <laughs> Right, while I'm not sleeping, but <laughs> supposed to be sleeping, you know, and all sorts of stuff. So it was, you know, hey, it was cool. Yeah, so I recap that. People easily the best part. There was some serious, like, the amount of, like, chops being busted was off the charts, which is great. It's always good when you get a group of guys that immediately start banging on each other from the get-go. We had a five-hour van ride from Vegas to the canyon and then back. So we spent at least 10 hours in the van together. The best part of together. was leaving. Yeah, we did Vegas right, which is you fly in, go to lunch, have two beers, step two, leave Vegas Yeah, for, for my money. Just get the hell out of there. The van ride wasn't that bad. The van ride back was enjoyable, but it smelled like the smells in that van between the body odor and the farts. <laughs> it was, oh my God. It was, I got, where did I get out? At some point I got out to pump gas or something like that and I got back in the van. And, no, it was at Bass Pro Shop. Yeah. I got out to return my shoes that yeah, I ended up not using wear. that I didn't wear. And I, came, and I came back in the van and my first thought was, if I smelled like this in Bass Pro Shop, I, oh my God, I'm embarrassed now for the people that were around me. Well, I said the whole time, once we get back, I, I pity the people in the lobby of the hotel where we stayed the final night because we caught an early flight on oh, whatever man. Monday. I pitied those people just because the waff was significant. It was bad. And I went in, so I, I go into the Bass Pro Shop to return these shoes I didn't wear. And I'm thinking, where's the receipt? Because that would be helpful to return these things. And of course, JJ used the receipt for my shoes to start the fire the first night, yeah. use it for some tinder. So I have no receipt. And, and Bunny took the bag and used it for our trash bag at the campsite. Oh. So no bag, no receipt. I've just got these shoes that haven't been worn. And I'm thinking if I go in and I'm charming, you know, to whatever, to the nice lady behind the customer service counter, she'll just take my shoes and it'll be fine. So I go in there and I'm nice and I slide my shoes and I'm like, hey, I, I got these, I don't need them. Funny story about the receipt. My friend burned it in the Grand Canyon, but I promised I didn't wear them. And I think that I'm just, you know, and she, does, and she doesn't even open up the box to see if there's even shoes in there. It could have been sand, right? And she just gives me my money back. And I walk out of there. That's a dedicated employee right there. Yeah, I mean, good, good on you, Bass Pro Shops, by the way. The customer service was, was perfect. Didn't even look to see what was inside. <laughs> so I stroll out of it. I'm, I'm really Customer's proud of myself. always right, Blaine. I'm you, thinking, you man, right. I just, I was so, so charming. I just got those shoes returned without, and she didn't even open the box. And then I open the door of the van and I get in and I'm like, she was just trying to get, she just thought, get this guy the hell out of here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even going to open the box. I just got to give this guy his money as fast as possible to get him the hell away from me because he smells like death. So that's kind of how that went, I think. So tactical recap, if you're going to go to the Grand Canyon, rent a, flew into wherever, Vegas was fine. You could probably find it somewhere else too, right? Because we were going to uh, go to Havasu, but. Phoenix anyway, and Vegas are. Phoenix, Vegas, whatever. Somewhere. So flew there. You know, went to the sort of, you go to the tourist, whatever thing, they got the lookout things that you put your quarter in and you can see more or something. I don't know. I saw them. And then you, you go down a, a series of switchbacks for probably three or four hours. It's straight down, but it's switchbacks, right? Yep. And so that was the worst part of all of this for me. Easily. I mean, the switchbacks just, you're staring at your feet because when you're going down, it's not fun. Every step counts. Right. When you have a rock on your back. It's worse. It's all those things. So. Get down. We we put some of our stuff down in the campsite that was down there. It was what, what uh, Bright Angel Trail? It was Bright Angel Trail, and we stayed at Indian Garden. Yeah. Campsite. So put some of our stuff down at Indian Garden, and then went 
and ruck to, to the Colorado River, a detour-ish, or, you know, go ex up and down once or twice here or there. But by and large, just Colorado, Colorado River, and then haul it back. Well, sorry, Colorado River, drink some beer. Well, actually, we put our gear down at Indian Garden and drank a beer. Yeah, yeah, that too. Then we got our rucks back on and went to the Colorado River, drank a beer, yep. <laughs> and then yeah. walked back up the hill, which was another, I think it was ended up being like 17 or 1800 vertical feet from the river back to the campsite. Yeah. About 4,000 vertical feet from the rim down to the river. So it's, it's a lot of downhill and uphill. Back to the campsite, drink a beer and, and some, some bourbon. bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> I felt a little judged by our fellow campers. There were one or two other campsites down there. It I was didn't. cold, winter. No, no, I didn't feel off-put by their judgment, but I could feel their judgment. You didn't notice it at all? No. Although I think they had a fire. I'm pretty sure that those people had yeah, an illegal so fire. Yeah, so that's the thing that the worst part about the whole experience was the whole no fire rule. And so if you go lots of places, Montana, done that a bunch, you have a fire at night, you know, it's great, all that type of stuff, right? The problem here was there's all sorts of rules about no fires. And so this, this other... I don't know, was it a couple? I, I can't remember. I but they know. had brought some big Coleman grill. Because you're allowed to have a grill, but yep. not a fire. And so then they put their fire in their grill, and I'm thinking, we've been played. <laughs> they won. They've done this before. They, they won, you know? Mm -hmm. And if I had it to do over again, I just would have strapped a big-ass Coleman grill to, to my ruck, uh, in addition to the, you know, 60 beers I, I rucked down. You didn't ruck like 60 G beers down. My, uh, no, that's right. We had 60 beers at one before. point, but. Yeah, so it was probably only. Like we drank some and we left some in the van. Yeah. Yeah. Because when we finished the second day and rucked our way out of the canyon and got back to the van. We also had, we had more, beers. Yeah. yeah. Big mm. shocker. That was the most fun anyone's ever had in the parking lot of the Grand Canyon, I think, ever. Ever. And we, were, and we weren't even like celebrating some monumental feat of strength and endurance. We were just happy to be there. Yeah. And we were just, we, the intent was to get there, jam a beer, get in the van, get back to Vegas. And we ended up hanging out in the parking lot for like hours. an hour and a half, two hours. Yeah, it was great. Screwing off, drinking beer, and Ben taking his shirt off for the camera. And so as a, as a hiking trip goes, this was significantly easier than a, than a 14er in Colorado. However, there were some other kind of logistical or physiological challenges along the way. The, the biggest one is that you start descending. You're at what, 7,000 and some change or something when you're, when you're yep. there? And you, you descend immediately. So that's cool, right? I'm, I'm cool with it. It was the worst part of the whole thing, but it, like, that's the adventure. It's, it's, it's fine, right? From the... The campground to the Colorado River was one of the most beautiful hikes yep. or rucks I've ever been on in my entire life. It was awesome. Yeah, it was like the Lord of the Rings part there. It was just it was, Lord of the Rings. It was yeah. just incredible. And what I love about yeah, you can take the pack mules down. I, I would, I cannot imagine a universe where I do that, right? The, the exercise associated with there's the not pack a litter on, on it. Back. Yeah, the no pack, pack on your yeah. back and you're moving on your own two feet. And it's just, with other guys, it was exhilarating. So getting to the bottom, going to the Colorado River, drinking a beer, you know, coming back, and we came back with some speed attached to it, which was fun, right? Because sort of whoop it on a little bit. That was good. Slept in the, slept at the, the bottom of the Grand Canyon, right there for, for a night. Woke up really early, because we went to bed. It was seven o'clock at night. <laughs> we got to them like, whew. I'm getting tired. Is it, is it time to go is to it bed, bed yet? Is it bedtime yet? Yeah. It's and 10 so, o'clock East Coast, you know. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. All the rationalizations were going on. So we sat there and, you know, spent some time, you know, out in the open air with my sleeping bag before hobbling underneath some, some other shelter when the rain started. Not a problem, right? It happens to the best of us. Then woke up really early, spent some time with JJ and his Gucci French press. Aeropress. Thing, Aeropress thing. And, Every, every time he pulls that thing out, you've got to listen to 15 minutes about how great it is, right? <laughs> I'm just sort of, come on. Can we Andy, talk about Andy with the instant Andy, coffee saved the day. Andy Jet was, Boyle hot Andy water instant coffee. Man, yeah, that was good. Th that was the The master. Starbucks via just black with some yeah. hot water. That was great, man. So then it was sort of, hey, we're going to move fast here. Now, this is, this is the part of this hike, which, by the way, hiking is just rucking in the mountains. So this is the part of this ruck that got a little different than say 
uh, ascending a, a mountain that you would find in Colorado or anywhere, which is uh, acute mountain sickness is just um, when you're altitude sickness, yeah. right? And so uh, two of the guys got signs of that at, at some point. And the only way to, to cure AMS or altitude sickness is to descend. However, the only way to get out of here is to ascend. So that was just one of those sort of food for thought things. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of us were coming from sea level. And so yeah. it's, it's just one of those things to be aware of. Probably the night before we did this hike, you know, all the beers and all the bourbon in a different campsite and then not sleeping. And the spicy sausage. The spice, and yeah, and, and then not really sleeping that night. The 4 a.m. wake up, yeah. Contributed to that, but I wouldn't trade a thing, especially since I was the one that got AMS. Yeah, I was going to say, I felt great. I mean, <laughs> so you just, you know, we, there's a stretch there where we kind of double rocked it, you know, just kind of lighten the load, make and sure so everyone's okay. The, the, the other part about AMS is that it's not, some of it is outside of your control. It doesn't matter how good a shape you're in. It doesn't yeah. matter anything. It's just how your body responds to altitude. So, you know, you just have to know that about yourself. I mean, Em and I were planning on, we would love to go hike Kilimanjaro at some point in our lives. Yep. Right? And, I mean, Kilimanjaro is at almost 19,000. So, that starts to be a problem. She's had AMS in the past. I remember when she came and visited me when, when we were married out in Colorado Springs. When you were married said, before. When the, you know, part uh. <laughs> right? Part uh. Right? And she came out and visited me when, in, in Colorado Springs, which is at what, 4,000 or something? 4,000, 5,000? I forget. Yeah. And she got, I mean, I took her straight to the incline in Colorado Springs because she's in great shape. And that's right. my favorite. And you workout. went really slow because you, ca you, you cared about yeah, making that's sure my you made favorite purpose. workout. The incline in Manitou Springs, which is right outside Colorado Springs. Yeah, it's a good time. It's awesome. And she, she got AMS there a little bit. And so she's susceptible to it. And you just got to, you got to train yourself to be used to it if, if you're, if you want to go do something to altitude. So anyway, everything ended up great. You know, Jimmy puked a few times, no big deal. He powered through. Oh, yeah, he powered, I mean, considering the guy had no fluids left in his body yeah. and a pounding headache, he still managed to keep, yeah, and, keep moving up the hill. And everybody that was there, nobody wants to show any signs of weakness, you know, yeah. ever. So it's one of those things where you, you kind of can't, it's, it's just yeah. a reality that surfaces and it, it is what it is. So, uh -huh. you know, it's cool. It could have been any of us. So long drive back to Vegas, quick stop at the Bass Pro Shop for me to return my shoes. And then how underwhelming. We had kind of had this idea of like, well, we'll be tired, but we'll still, we'll go do a little Vegas. We got the one night. We had like 6 a.m. flights. So it was like a 4 a.m. wake up. So we're not going to get crazy, but we'll do a little I've Vegas. Done this, I've done the strip before. Totally I've underwhelming. It's just Totally underwhelming. We, we tried. $9 Budweiser's get old. Yeah. We ended up, so just, I, I don't mind admitting, we tried to go to Cosmo. The Cosmopolitan and have a, a drink at the Chandelier Bar. Underwhelming. I'd been there once before. I'd had a different experience. It was like, you can't go home again type thing. Kind of lame. Then we ended up going to the food court at like, where was that? Caesar's Palace. We ended up, like, we ended up we literally like in the food else, court at Caesar's Palace eating, eating tacos. And then we just went to bed. Yeah. Which was fine, by the way. There was leftover bourbon and stuff. I mean, yeah. it wasn't that big of a deal. I mean, we were all tired enough, I guess. I mean, if it would have been more awesome, I would have completely not slept and... But it's just not that awesome. It's just not that awesome. No, I mean, if you're, if you're going to drop a few grand and like get into some VIP room or this or that, I suppose Vegas could be more fun, but I... It's still not that awesome. You're right. Because I've actually had that experience too. I said this. Not, I was yeah. like, we should have just gotten all the, you know, go get another 60 rack. And we've got plenty of bourbon and sit in here and we had a joining shit. We had adjoining rooms at, at uh, the Planet Hollywood, yeah. which was like, I haven't done that since I was like in high school. Like, we got adjoining rooms. Just leave the door open between the rooms. Yeah. That was actually pretty cool. Um, I mean, dudes went from really smelly to really not smelly. It was awesome. Yeah. Right? Especially when it was me that went from really smelly to really not smelly. That was great. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> thought that like one of the washcloths or towels were like, was filthy and was, was it going to call down the front desk? Yeah, no, it's like, Bunny, no, no, that's Bunny, just for me. <laughs> at the end, so Blaine wanted to, to shine his own boots, right? <laughs> brush shine. Yeah, brush shine, brush shine. They weren't my boots. I had a pair of Reebok Nano sneakers. That was the big debate. I forgot about that. <laughs> I had no boots. So because you got to go out, you got to look somewhat respectable, right? Like a, like a gentleman of sorts. You got to camouflage the dirt in your life. So Blaine got the little washcloth from the bathroom, which by the way, I did... Do the same Almost thing on simultaneously your shoes, by the way. in yeah. the other bathroom, but but yours is the one that, that Bunny found. And 
And so brush shine his, his shoes and then threw the threw the towel in the in the bathtub. In the bathroom. <laughs> no one's and gonna sit in the bathtub, let's it's be in honest. In the bathtub. And then Bunny comes in and goes, Hey, so guys, I just wanna uh, I wanna let you know that if we're looking to do like call down to the front desk and tell them we want, you know, a cheaper rate. Just tell them that someone, because someone definitely did, right? They took a, a washcloth and, and wiped, they their, wiped ass with their, their ass <laughs> with it, and then they threw it in the bathtub. And in the maid service, they didn't they didn't get it out of here. So let's call them and get a reduced room rate. And, and but he's like, well, actually, I, I, I shined my boots or my yeah. shoes with it, and so he's like, oh, okay, well, let's not do that then. Well, you know, it just you know, amongst all the Wednesday posts about what kind of <laughs> shoes should you wear for a Go Ruck challenge or for selection or whatever, in case anyone cares, I showed up with a pair of old pair of Reebok Nanos, and I was like, man, I guess I'm just going to use these. Then we had to go to Brass Pro Shop to buy uh, Jet Boil fuel, and they added some shoes on sale. So I'm like, you know what? Maybe I'll get these Merrells. And I'll do these. And then I thought about it and I was like, nah, I don't, I don't want to do that. I'm just going to go with what I got. So I ended up doing the whole, the whole thing for two days in a pair of sneakers, which by the way were fine, had no issues, feet feel great, I mean, whatever, and uh, returned those shoes. But as it turns out, the shoes don't really matter that much as long as you're broken. If they're comfortable enough, I mean, yeah. Which, so, okay, so that kind of brings me to the next point, which is the gear. Yep. Right? So we all, we all did the did the trip. We did the the ruck with with go ruck with like rucks on, right? We didn't have any of the super ultra light, you know, Kelty North Face hiking backpacks or whatever. We we had two days worth of stuff. We had a couple of tents, sleeping bags, all that stuff, and we managed to do it all with. Uh, I think all of us had GR twos except for you. You had a GR three. Yeah. Right. So we we managed to get all the beer and the bourbon and the and food and the the sleeping stuff and whatever. I brought the GR three so I could make sure that we had plenty of room for beer. Yeah. I, I'm not a, I'm not really a booze guy, so I'm I'm willing to carry the weight. Yeah, because I was like, hey, share. bring a flask, because like we'll bring some bourbon down. And I'm Jason's like, I'm bringing beers. I'm like, you know, between the weight of the beer and like you got to pack your trash out too, by the way. So if you drink yeah. a beer, you got to bring all the cans back out. And Jason's like, I don't care. I'm just, I'm you got to smash beer. them down right. You know, you get lots of practice. It's good. So how do, how do you think, because one of the things I was concerned about, I guess, is that on a day-to-day, -day, like an everyday carry kind of situation, or when I'm traveling for work, I, even when I was in the military, I can't stand for my ruck to be a gypsy camp. I want it to be tight, everything inside, you know, everything in its place, that kind of deal. I don't want a bunch of stuff dangling and straps and zippers and all that. You know, so I was worried, like, man, these things are going to be kind of a gypsy camp because of the capacity. And... We ended up having to like roll some stuff up and use the molly and strap some stuff to the outside. We used a couple compression bags for some yeah. things, but I mean, for the most part, it, it, we didn't really have any gypsy camps that I noticed. It was maybe a little more than I would have liked on an everyday basis, but like it worked out fine. I mean, I so look, that's the, those are the trade-offs, right? I mean, if you want to own 150 backpacks, right, and everything you do requires a special backpack, then, then great, right? But if, if you want to fly into somewhere and go for a hike, AKA ruck in the mountains, right? You can use the same bag and, you, it, and it can last forever, right? And so, you know, I saw a lot of people out on the trails. I saw some people with Swiss army bags, which are just disgusting, right? I mean, those custom Take zippers, that. there are 450 logo pops on their bags. I counted on, on one bag, right? The, the, all the zippers, you know, all the zippers clanging together like this, right? Like two pieces of metal. And, and by the way, there's lots of, there's, there's about a hundred different zippers on the bag. So it's like a Jenga truck in yeah, Afghanistan. So yeah. So, so, you know, that's two of them at each of those just clanging together all over the place. And they all say Swiss army and all, all these things. And, you know, I mean, there's plenty of huge hiking packs that are, you know, six feet above your head and they're lying green and there's 7,000 straps all over them, but somehow they, they weigh three pounds and that's, you know, one pound lighter. I mean, look, here's the thing. If one pound matters that much to you, get tougher. Just get tougher, right? I mean, if you're going to go climb Everest, if you're going to do something super technical that is, you know, borderline life or death, how you perform, then yes, shave every possible ounce, but also do that on your body. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. If it, so you've talked about this before. These guys that weigh, you know, 
400 pounds, but they're talking about shaving two ounces of, of their, their bicycle weight. Yeah, yeah go I, I, got, I got the new titanium pedals that weigh three ounces less, you know, or grams. I think most, most of those guys talk in grams, but whatever. I mean, I mean like, it's absurd. Yeah, and it's expensive. So like, you know, going from the super heavy pedal to the not so heavy one is a little bit more money. But then for every gram or whatever you lose, it's like a hundred more dollars or something crazy. And you're like, at some point, I mean, it's just, I don't know. But so my, my experience with it was I, I carried a 40 liter GR2 that was filled to the gills because I had a tent and an extra sleeping bag and all that, right? So I actually took a compression bag and, and a bungee cord after a few efforts of trial and error and got I it on the outside of my rug. I saw your first version was not good. It was not it good. Was, it was flapping all no, over the, the place. There was, it was a bit of an engineering problem that took me a minute to figure yeah. out. But, but I, I did that and I went, I mean, I had no hip pad, no sternum strap even. I just went hydration bladder, regular old GR2. Yeah. And uh, I, it was totally comfortable. I had no issues with it at any point on the hike. And my, it wasn't like an 80 pound ruck, but it wasn't nothing. It was 35 or 40 pounds probably of like everyday gear. And it was So I felt no the issue. same way. I had the GR3, which I, I put the padded hip belt on on the way down for most of the time. And I used it sort of. The, the weight, it was pro mine was probably, a li mine was probably closer to 50. Something like that, at least on the way down before we drank all the beer. God bless us, America. Right? And it just, it wasn't, for me personally, it wasn't enough weight to really warrant a padded hip belt. So, you know, everyone, that said, everyone is a little bit different. I mean, I'm not really all that good at, you know, the CrossFit games or anything like that, but rucking, I'm pretty okay at. So, you know, for me, everyone's weight is different, what you're sort of comfortable with. And... For me, I mean, on the way up, I didn't, I didn't use it. And so I, I was happier about that. I just put the padded hip belt in the, inside the ruck and it was no problem. So, um, how did you feel about, so like several of the guys had to have like a water bottle carabiner onto the outside or they rolled up their fleece and kind of had it bungeed. I know that you really like for the packs to stay tight, no gypsy camps, whatever. Did you get a tinge of anything at all, or were you cool with it as we're I going down into the canyon? I always get a little tinge of that stuff. It's also kind of a dose of reality. It's sort of, <laughs> hey, you've got something, and you've got, uh, you know, you've got a jacket that you want to take off, and you just throw it off to the side, and it, it happens, you know? Yeah. It happens. Yeah, but, I'm kind of the same way. Like, you want to minimize it to the extent you can, but I also don't want to, like, be rejiggering my whole ruck to fit my fleece inside there if I'm going to have to put it back on again yeah, in an hour. Yeah, I mean, you know? it's a little easier with the GR3 because I could just shove it in the top. So it's sort of, well, of course I could do it because I had more. I mean, when you start when you start packing out a sleeping bag, uh, what do you call a puss pad? Uh, sleeping pad? I don't a know. sleeping pad. In the military, you call it a puss Bitch pad. Bitch mat. Uh, yeah, bomber calls it something else, right? Semper Fi bomber, you know? <laughs> And so you say that type of stuff takes up a lot of volume. So, so here, here's a little news flash about, about GR3. Because I, I read these comments about there's, there's nothing that's new about GR3. There's nothing interesting about it. I read all of that stuff. And, you know, part of, part of life is a two-way conversation. The other part is sometimes people are right, not sometimes other people are wrong, right? And so with GR3, go up likes to take things back to the fundamentals, back to the basics. So the, the beauty is the simplicity. It's not in the complexity, right? Hey, here's a million features. That's not really our style, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's, this is a simple black. Yeah, it works in a lot yeah. of settings, by the way. It works, right? Yeah. This is a simple half sip, right? I've got a you know, pocket in my, uh, above my left breast. You know, it's, it's simple. The rucks are sort of the same way. So the GR3, the the real kind of complexities that we've made simple were how to integrate a padded hip belt so you could remove it and then put it on. And the problem is, is when you remove a padded hip belt from anything I've ever seen, it, it's either really hard to do or it doesn't really bear the weight quite as well, right? So even when you add the, the, the padded hip belt onto a GR2, it doesn't do as good of a job as, as the padded hip belt on GR3 because it's, it's not integrated the same way. So mm -hmm. like Molly on the GR2 versus this new thing that we did on GR3. So removing that padded hip belt makes it a lot more of a airport friendly, urban friendly, Baghdad, New York City, plus the mountains of Afghanistan for GR3 is really sort of what the, the inspiration was. So, you know, I mean, how much you want to use that is kind of up to you based upon your 
situations. And yes, it weighs more than the lime green packs with the 4,000 straps on them, got it, right? But at least you don't need two. Two packs weigh more than one. So, you know, I mean, you have to travel somewhere with some pack and then you have to do something with it, or you have to travel with two packs. With, with our stuff, we try to make it so that it's more adaptable, which is sort of part of the special forces avatar of, of the, the special forces way of life. Yeah, I totally agree. So if the people were the best part of the trip, the second best part for me was just the freaking majesty of the Grand Canyon. I'd never been there before. I'd been to some canyons. I'd never been to the Grand Canyon. I could not believe just how vast and kind of epic. How grand it was. It was very grand. In fact, <laughs> it was aptly named. I think someone um, else. I think I think someone else said that joke. This place is. This place is. And nobody could find the word, and I forget who it was, but they're like, grand. Would you, could, would you say it was grand? <laughs> so yeah. I've been there. I've been to the lookout spots before, and we didn't go to all the lookout spots, which is fine, by the way. Which hardly captures its grandness it, by looking from afar, right? Doing it, hiking in the Grand Canyon was way better than the lookout spots. Imagine that. Hiking it with our crew, a million times better. So... You know, I mean, in terms of memories of the Grand Canyon, yeah, I remember the time when I drove through and I was there and I, you know, I saw, I saw it. I, it was great, right? It was, it was grand. Yeah. But actually doing it, that sort of cemented the memory for me. It also happened to be one of my resolutions for this year, if you want to call it a resolution. Check it off. Yeah. So th this reminds me a little bit of the, we were talking about Goodwill Hunting earlier today and you were saying how there's that scene <laughs> in Goodwill Hunting yeah. when... You know, Matt Damon, who's this like know-it-all kid, but, but scared shitless. He's a know-it-all kid because he's just scared to look in the mirror, basically. He was sort of ridiculing some piece of art or something on uh, Robin, Robin Williams', Williams office. Yeah. And he kind of let it go. Then when he comes back the next time, Robin Williams is giving him the business fine. He's like, you know what, I thought about this and it bothers me because you're just some scared shit of a kid who's never been outside of Boston. And you might, if I ask you about that piece of art, you might quote me this book or... If I ask you about a poem, you might tell me this, but if I, you don't if know. If I ask you about war, you'll say once more in the, in, into the breach, but you don't know what it's like to hold, hold your hold, friend. Exactly, yeah. right? You don't know what it smells like in the Sistine Chapel. And for me, sort of descending into the Grand Canyon and walking every inch of the, from the rim to the Colorado River and back, like you, don't, you get to smell the sagebrush at the bottom. You get to like look a mule deer face to face and at your campsite and wonder if it's going to gore you to death. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you get to see the Colorado River and like how fast it's moving. And I went and got my, put my feet in it and felt how cold it was this time of year. And you get to see the different colors of the stone, you know, as you go down. Like there's some like weird model in the Rangers station at the top, but like that isn't great. You know, it's like a, whatever, it might as well be a Lego project or tourist. something. You know? That's yeah, tourist. exactly. What we did is not, I didn't really feel like a tourist. I felt like we earned some. For sure, and especially because we probably broke half the rules. Like, by the way, can you have beer in the Grand Canyon? I don't even know if you can. I don't know. We certainly didn't ask because we're more about forgiveness than permission around here. But, you know, I think experiencing it like that, you know, like you said, it cements the memory because you have it. By the way, smell and taste are the two most evocative senses, right? So if you, and for the military veterans out there, I know you know what I'm talking about. If you smell like burning plastic or you smell like burning jet fuel or something, you just, brought back, you just brought back a lot of memories. Yeah, me. right. So if you've, if you've been to Iraq and there's a, there's a very high chance you've smelled a burn pit of, you know, of the dump site, a lot of burning, all the plastic water bottles like we're just polluting the environment with, burning on the side of the fire base. Like if you smell that now, if you smell burning trash, you are immediately yep. into that environment, into your head. The smell doesn't. So for me, it's the same thing. Burning burning jet fuel like if I occasionally have to walk out on the runway of an airport to get on one of these little commuter planes or whatever and I can smell the fuel yep. coming off the Thanks engines whoo man like I'm back on the flight line like waddling onto the C-130 or, or whatever yeah. so being able to be there and just like smell the cold air smell the sage smell the each other's <laughs> freaking farts and so the funny <laughs> thing is is after a while you really don't know how bad you smell. And you, and you also, here's the beauty of it. And, and this is the real beauty about going back to the most important point, which is the people, is you really don't even know how bad the person next to you smells. No. Because it just sort of becomes part of the landscape. It's in the wash. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't matter. 
No. It just doesn't matter. We're all in it together. Well, that's a great point, by the way. Like this, it doesn't matter thing. Like that's another thing. You sp it only takes a couple of days and you're out there just kind of with all, everything you own on your back. You're just trying not to freeze to death at night. You look forward to maybe a sausage or a, you know, a, a, some a oatmeal or mix. something. Yeah, a lot some, of trail mix. Some, some, pe some peanut M&Ms. <laughs> Remember that bag of trail mix you had that was half, I accidentally became half peanut M&Ms? Yeah. That was the best discovery of the day. I'm like, let me get some of this trail mix. I'm like, oh man, this is like half peanut M&Ms. Yeah, hey, let me get a handful of that. It's the little things in life. Yeah, or, or the instant coffee in the morning. It, it doesn't take long. It took a day, two days, until your whole perspective shifts on what's really important, what really matters. Like, you, do, you stink. Do you care? No. You're a little hungry. Is it a big deal? No. You know, remember when it got to be like 25 degrees on the second night and we were like, man, this is warm. This is nice. Because yeah. the first night it was like 10 and we were just the freezing our butts off. Terrible. Yeah, so the, the sense of appreciation you gain in that short an amount of time, which is something we have preached here, by the way, if you guys have ever been able to follow it, and I don't blame you if you haven't, but one of the common themes that we keep always coming back to is this idea that you like, if you just can appreciate the little things that are going on around you all the time and just take a half a step back from the hamster wheel, there's good stuff, good people going on all around you. You, you just have to make it a point to embrace it and to like to be a part of it and appreciate it. Like, look, we live at the ocean, the beach is right there. If you're not going out and taking it in every now and then, like you're wrong and shame on you. If you're miserable, I don't know what to tell you. Like the Atlantic Ocean's right there across the street. Yeah. Like, maybe, I don't know. By the way, we're hiring at GoRup. Yeah, like, I don't know, maybe go grab something from Pita Pit on your lunch break and go sit on the beach for a while. Like, you'd be amazed how much better you feel. It's, it's just, it's there for the taking. And when you think about like America, and what America has to offer, like in the we have the Grand Canyon for Look God's sake. We got Big Daddy in the house. National treasure. National treasure, right Big there, Daddy. ladies and gentlemen. Come on, Big Daddy. Senior director, Go Rock Events. Yeah. Here he Let's is. Let's go. Pull, pull it up. Pull, yeah, there you go. How's everyone doing today? How are you doing what today? More importantly, you guys have? I'm doing great. <laughs> doing excellent today. Yeah. Yep. I see you guys have enough beers up here. For you. I can't believe that Jason will allow that Genesee stuff up here. Genesee is great. It's good. It's the, oldest it's, it's the oldest brewery in New York, and it was a gift. So it's, it's two great kinds of beer. For one, yeah, actually, it's three great kinds. You know what you do when it's someone a, gives you a beer? You say thank you. You say thank you. That's right. So thank first you. of all, this is a beer that tastes like beer. So it passes the first test, right? Yeah. Second of all, it's a, it's a great old school American brewery founded in 1878. So it's authentic. And third, it was free. So a beer that tastes like beer that comes from a heritage brewery and is free. I mean, yeah, where else awesome. does it belong? If it doesn't belong on this table, I don't know where the hell it belongs. <laughs> this beer, I on the other agree. hand, is from Shreveport, Louisiana. It's a gift from Bomber or some friends of his. It's called Reasonably Corrupt Black Lager, and it's meant to depict the nature of Louisiana politicians. Yeah. Mm -hmm. More importantly, it tastes just like Duke's uh, Cold Nose from here at Bold City Brewery, Duke's, which uh, Duke's Cold Nose, Brown right? Brown Ale. Brown Ale. Cold Nose is the name of it, right? No. 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 Is that a different one? Bold City. It's Duke's Brown Ale. Duke's Brown Ale. It's delicious. This stuff it's tastes brown just like it. it. Duke's Brown Ale is delicious. Yeah. I, it's my favorite local brew. So, BD, while you have you, while we have okay. you, we were talking earlier, there's some stuff coming out soon. Maybe a little teaser. We got some new event we do. schedule launches coming out very, very soon. You want to, do you very, wanna, very shortly. Do you want to tease that to our friends out here? Well, what, which know, ones are they? To complement the Constellation series, you know, we have the uh, 6 hour and 12 hour. Those are totally different. They're not, if you do 12 hours, you're getting the last six hours. That's not how it works. We have a... Uh, totally you know, new 12 hours. 12 totally hours. 12 stuff. hours. Yeah. We, we take different kind of pepper spray and exactly. make sure that you don't have a functioning gas mask. <laughs> this time and it goes then, in your nose and not your eyes. It, <laughs> at least this time when we ordered this stuff in bulk, we didn't have someone from the ATF contact us on why we needed so much pepper spray. Okay, so we oh. clarified that up front. So that was good. But uh, you know some other exciting things. You know we had uh, we take away beached, we bring in uh, the Poseidon type event where it's going to be a six hour and twelve hour that's really going to push people to their limits. I know, hey, you know Jason thought we were crazy with the water stuff. We almost got him to do the Marines just wouldn't let it go though. Water we, survival. We, you know what? It's going to be big. It's going to be big. It is. It is. The Go Ruck Challenge Expedition Beach Constellation rolled into one, but it's in the water, and it's going to be awesome. Looking forward it's to that. It's going to be one of the most awesome events ever, along with Constellation and the Go Ruck Tough. So that's level so of awesomeness. So the Poseidon schedule is coming out soon, right? End of this month. Very soon. Sometime in January. Month. So Emily month. did the beta, which thanks to Tina Streeter happened. 
by the yes. way. So thank you, Tina. Big thanks, to Tina, who, who, by the way, at a different time, or was it the same time? She brought like, she brought enough. I don't, I don't want to say how much alligator tail she brought, but I know that I was grilling it at my house for, for hours or frying it in a pan, right? For hours. And it was, it was good. We ate it for a while. And Emily did the event with, with Tina, the, the Beach Beta, which was, uh, yeah, it was maritime ops, maritime sort of stuff. And, and uh, Emily said a, a while back, and you know, she ran, in, she ran in college, and it's not a stranger to sort of pushing her body. She sort of, you know, the challenge, you know, I was her first cadre, so that probably sucked for her. <laughs> she didn't come back for any more of that, right? And, and side note on that is, I was our first cadre when she was my ex-wife. So that was, you know, maybe even more interesting. And we had this, we, uh, we, I had this line <laughs> back then. It was like, hey, the GoRo challenge is so cool. Even your ex-wife wants to do it with you, <laughs> right? And it didn't really stick, but, you know, other things came about of that. No matter, we'll, we'll move on. Okay, thank anyway. God that didn't apply to me. Because <laughs> yeah. I want all three of my ex-wives. Uh, you, know, you can have a whole class. Do, yeah. 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 My own. Yeah, we, yeah, especially <laughs> if we start including all the all the Zales. Exactly. All the, anyway. <laughs> right? So M did the beach beta, though. And she goes, you know, at the end, so she's scared of the water, or was scared of the water. She was. She's not anymore. And she goes, I understand now why people have these moments at GORUCK events where they find a fear and they overcome it and it changes their lives. Yes, so that, that was her to me the day after whenever yeah. the, the beach beta was. So that, I mean, that's pretty cool. So, you know? so she, what didn't get it, she didn't get it from me. So what we've tried to do is implement that into the new series of constellations of having, you know, and really it's dual hatted of a, you know, a stress, a stress sex at the end of Constellation, a stress swim, the culminating events, these collexes at the end of these stress, very specific, Apply it. very specific mm -hmm. events. They're geared with like real world, no shit survival. Like, you know what? I'm in this moment now and I don't have every single thing that I need, but it doesn't matter because you have this and you have you this. You got your brain and you got your you heart. Brain and your heart. And so we're implementing these stress exercises, the end of each one, the culminating exercises to capture that moment like Emily had in Beach when when we thought we'd keep them, ah, uh, you know what, 600 meters offshore and they rapidly went 1.2 nautical miles. Okay, so <laughs> was that planned? No, it wasn't. The current it, gets a vote. Did it? It, it does. The current, <laughs> yeah. the current gets a vote, but you know what? It was it culminated in a kick-ass moment. Then all actually all the participants were like, damn. You know what? That reminds me. That was real. So what do we do at the end of Constellation? Put in a stress exercise. At the end of Poseidon, put a stress, a stress exercise. We have a working title for an event. You know, we had expeditions. Well, you know, what are we, what's a go ruck truck? You know, go ruck truck is an expedition, correct? Yeah. An upgrade of that is the excursion. Mm -hmm. And what that is, is a, that is a no shit wilderness exercise modeled after SF star courses, survival courses. It puts you in a scenario there's no longer, it's not tree hugging, it's not granola eating, it is no shit skills that you have to ruck. We love trees and we don't always hate granola, especially for really, This really, is really true. Hungry. I but. know when you guys were down in Arizona, you were eating a lot of granola, but <laughs> and the point of it is, <laughs> the point of it is to teach you valuable survival skills. They're not boring, they're kick ass, or they are conducted by a special operations cadre, and uh, you will see those very shortly here by the end of the month. So a lot of folks have asked about what's the future of expeditions? Are we going to see Poseidon? That's your answer. By the end of this month, you're going to see a slate of, of a whole series of dates for Poseidon as well as for the wilderness survival portion, which is going to be excursion. That's the working Ex title. Excursion is the working title. So there you go. It may get shot be long. down. I may get, I may get faux five by This Jason is transparency right here. We're, we're live, we're live debating the name of I an event heard, series right now. See, he, he he has, this, this is why like BD it. wanted to do it on live, exactly. Facebook Live. Hey, so that we're to sell stuff. You know it's like, hey. hey, the Go Ruck Trucks what? It's an expedition. What's an upgrade to an expedition? I'm like, excursion. Okay, what is this? The gotcha game, <laughs> right? Ha ha, <laughs> got you good. Exactly. See? When they start, you know what? Hey, this will, this will, that's how we got Poseidon. You know, we put it. We put the vote to the community and the, the, the nation spoke. So 
a lot of a lot of exciting things going on. You know, I want to say thank you also everybody for supporting the FAD cell and getting out there and getting these firearms. firearms yeah. mm -hmm. You know, and for everyone who signed up to to do the Go Ruck Tough and the Go Ruck Light, we have almost as many people sign up for lights right now as we did the whole last year. And I think it's very exciting because they're going to be great. That's programs. pretty cool. That is pretty cool. And community yeah. service community service projects. We have some things going on that's going to assist the cadre and. Uh, really making these community service projects better. And I think it's going to serve the communities a lot better and really make for an awesome event. Nice. Well, BD, thanks, man. Thank we, you so we, much. Thanks for letting us ambush you here. We, had, we laid in a linear ambush and we got you coming from yeah. behind the, the whiteboard. You know what? There's one thing I've learned at GoRuck, performance on demand. There Peace. you go. <laughs> you can tell your girlfriend we said, you, we said you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with yeah. that, Bomber, what do you got? Jason and I are out of material, clearly. Yeah. Bomber, questions, personality, yes, come on, like, come lighten it up. Can I open a beer for you? Do you need one? Yes. Okay, you want one of these green ones? Yes. I drank, hey, bring this up. This I drank is, both uh, your, your Shreveport Nick's ones. EDC. Everyday Carry Nick. Everyday Carry Nick. Yeah. I mean, we need to buckle these. It looks, it's meant to be buckled. See, we don't, right? like, we don't is, like the gypsy so camp, if, Bomber. If we got to tighten this up. Nobody keeps the side buckles buckled on the GR3. We're just going to lose them like we yeah. did on the GR2. That's it. So well, Nick is send, us, crime and punishment. send us your pictures of GR3, and if too many don't have those buckles buckled, then we'll just start removing them. It's not a problem. <laughs> All right, Bomber, what do you got? Stop trying to questions. assign blame, Nick. It's your rock. You're responsible Wait, for it. Just, here, hold that at all times. Hold it. Okay. Right? I don't, I don't want to. Jessica asked if you were um, using known trails, or did y'all just kind of? Yeah. Ooh, known trails. Super. There's no, there is no unique trail that you're going to take in the Grand Canyon. No, unless you're trying to go rock climbing. Like if you, if you're a legitimate skilled rock climber, I'm not sure you're allowed I'm to not do sure that. Not sure you're allowed to do that. But I mean, there are places where you could have like done some actually pretty fun climbing. I think there were like caves I don't and think stuff. You're but to do that. I'm not sure that's it's, allowed. It's really. So this is this is my only kind of reservation about telling someone to go there is that it is you are you're kind of cattle of sorts right now less so in January less so in January yeah more so, so if I would you say go, in June. There, there's lots of there's lots of hikes out there in the world that said the Grand Canyon the reason why the reason why there are three million visitors to the Grand Canyon a year is because it's worth it mm -hmm. so you know. I've done a lot of hikes in, in Montana and there's no fanfare and they're awesome and it's just about your crew. I wouldn't want to go to the Grand Canyon every year because it's just more of a production. You can't have fires, you can't do this yeah. stuff, but it's a Grand Canyon. It's it's worth it's it's sort of, you know, the restaurant that's so busy that nobody goes there anymore type thing. I mean, yeah. you should see what it's like because it's it's amazing. It's grand. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you, like, being off the beaten path isn't really a priority there, in my opinion. Like, no. it's just so vast, it's so grand that there's real. I don't, I don't, can't imagine there'd be much value in taking some alternative path. Cause you're still in the Grand Canyon. I don't, I don't know. I just, it's not like going through a hike in the woods in Florida or somewhere where you're, you're literally off the beaten path and you're seeing something that like other people aren't seeing. It's, you're in the canyon. There's nowhere to go but down. No uh, reason. Hey, so Sorry, Monster just Bianca showed up. Here. Bianca just brought Bianca, Monster. Come on, That's she's awesome. Our, uh... Bianca, oh, come on. Hey, Ben. Mm -hmm. You don't want to leave Monster alone together? Yeah, <laughs> awesome. So Bianca is one of our valued customer service representatives. She answers your questions. I do. Graciously. They're so much fun. Yeah, we get a lot of positive Nation. feedback. HTL finisher. That is. Yeah. Right. How? Let's talk about your HTL. How was it, Bianca? It was an experience. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what I got myself into. How many times did you quit? Would you say? Uh, at least ten. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. She is also the face of uh, Scars and PX. That's yeah. true. You got a very awesome yeah. picture of you I over there throwing back a sandbag. To the HTL. My favorite moment was during the top, and I was trying to do push-ups, and Jason has his cadre voice on, so he's yelling. And he's I'm, I'm talking loudly <laughs> so that people can hear me. Okay, C correct. continue. Cadre voice. Talking loudly, yes, cadre <laughs> voice. And I cannot do the push up. I'm trying and trying, and he's like, get up, do the push up. Da, da, da. He breaks for a second because Monster comes and licks my face, and he goes, don't worry, Monster still loves you, and then keeps walking off. <laughs> <laughs> and 
and I just laid in the water, cold, tired. I was like, okay. Speaking of smelling bad, Monster just came in here and crop dusted us yeah. terribly, right? Everyone totally. smelled that? He did. I'm going to yeah. choose not to blame that on Bomber or Bianca. That had to be Monster, <laughs> it right? It was Monster. Okay. <laughs> God dang. I think it's Nick. <laughs> Holy cow. Monster. Come All right. On. Bomber, what else you got for questions, man? Um, Barry loves the workout videos. Barry loves the workout. Okay. How many of those have, we have been published? Have workout videos Two. yet? Two, right? They've gone out. Yeah, last Wednesday and, and this Wednesday. So Nick has been doing a great job editing those and shooting those. We've done, how many have we done? Four or five? So we got, we got another couple in the can. So you're going to get those for at least two more weeks. Good. And we'll plan to shoot some more. So the idea is that every Wednesday you'll get a new workout video. I'm glad that someone's like watching them and liking them. That's the idea. So we want to give you guys like, not, this stuff's not rocket science, but we want to give you some creative ways to use your ruck. In some cases, use the sandbags to get out and kind of like use the tools that you have at hand to still get a really good workout. And so rucking, as we've discussed a lot this week, actually, we got a lot of really good input from uh, Kelly Starrett on this. Rucking can and should be the core of most people's physical fitness regimen. It's, it gives most people most of what they need. But there are other things, which by the way, great endorsement there, but there are other things that you can and need to do to be kind of a complete sort of athlete or to be more fit. And you can use your ruck, as it turns out, to do a lot of those things. So that's what the workouts are intended to kind of give you. Okay. Bianca, see you. Later, Bianca. Bianca. See y'all later. Can we get an Adios. Here. Thanks for bringing Monster by. No problem. Oh, yeah. Dude, awesome. Uh, ben Holt wants to know will there be more limited edition rucks? Yes, very soon. I think there's going to be a workshop of sorts. I don't know how much you want to talk about this, but we'll have a workshop. I don't know, you guys like GR1? Again soon. <laughs> Does anybody like GR1? Does anybody, anybody like GR1? Could be interesting, you know, yeah. if we played around with it a little bit. I mean, it's been, so it's been almost, ten, it's, no, it's been about 10 years since GORUCK was a thing. It's been right at about 10 years since GR1 started to get designed. We sort of started out as this idea for special forces kind of consulting and stuff. And then it quickly transitioned to building a bag. And so, you know, I'd be curious to see if you all would have any additions to how we do things, right? I mean, kind of made it one way and for the last eight years you can get it that way. And it could be cool to see if there's some additions that you all would like. And maybe those will be available to you. It's for a limited time. Maybe possibly for a limited time. I like it. Okay. What else? Uh, Richard Irwin asked with a 94% pass rate of go ruck, do you like that as moving forward? Is that the standard? 94% pass rate of, of the light? Of the tough. Of the tough. That's, you know, that's a that's an old stat that we used to monitor a little bit more. I'm, I would bet it's still about that. I mean, what's your gut say, Bomber? About that. Yeah. Probably about that. I mean, yeah. so you sort of say these kind of marketing things like the hardest part is signing up. I mean, everybody is like, go, go bring this to your friends. And so actually... The pass rate for the Go Ruck Tough Challenge is probably about 0.0001% because nobody signs up for it, right? Everyone's too scared. Some Green Beret, some SEAL, some whatever is going to, you know, they're going to kill me wherever, blah, 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 right? <laughs> leave I mean, me for dead in the streets of yeah, Philadelphia. Yeah, they're going to leave me for dead and, you know, blah. Oh, excuse, excuse, excuse. Cry me a river, right? And... And so that said, of the people who show up, people are people show up ready, and that's great. So I'm also people help each other out, which has been sort of my experience. Is that yeah. everyone that shows up for a tough is not at the same level physically or mentally in terms of their personal toughness, right? But you know, the people who are a little more ready tend to help out the people who are a little less ready. And I'm not suggesting you should show up unprepared and just count on the class carrying you through it. I don't. I don't think that's really the right approach, but I would say you're probably more ready than you think. And if you have the guts to sign up, you're probably going to be okay. And if you have a little bit of a low moment at two or three in the morning coming across the bridge from Welcome the beach the in St. Augustine, then there'll be 30 other people there who will, who will pick you up. It's like I ran a JFK 50 a few times, and one of the rules is always you have to have at least one buddy. Because over that distance, and you can say the same thing about like a heavy I would say this mm -hmm. is definitely true. Over that time, over that distance, over that level of stress, everyone has a low moment. That's just the way it is. Like maybe you're tough enough, you can do a tough 12 hours piece of cake. 
But you start getting the 24 hour, the over 20 miles no, no, kind of thing. I'm like, going to stop you real quick. If it's a piece of cake, then put out more for your team. Yeah, you should be helping out more. I mean, yeah, for sure. These people that leave the tough and say, oh, you know, whatever. Oh, yeah, there were some people that didn't put out and F them and I, I crushed it. I'm like, well. Yeah. You should have been in the back half of the Zodiac the entire longer. time. Yeah. You should have done that without a rest. The, yeah. The, I, I learned this my first counseling statement when I showed up at, at group. And at the top was a, the Bible verse, those to whom much is given, much is expected. And that stuck with me big time. It, it's not about fair. It's not about how great you are. It's not about you at all. It's about your commitment to something bigger than yourself. And when you find yourself on a team, which is by definition about more than you, then, you know, put out more. And if, at the end, if you're not as broke as someone who is showing up and can't do all the pretty muscle push-ups and stuff, then you didn't put out enough. Yeah, totally agree. That's the beauty of the sort of the as many reps as possible type mentality too, right? Like yeah. if you finish the work and you're like, oh, that was easy, then why didn't you go faster? Yeah. Why didn't you work harder? You Nothing know? should be easy. Yeah, that never gets easier. You just do more. Just work harder. Yeah. Agreed. Alex mentioned that when he said he was doing events to train for selection that he would help people and carry more and carry the team weight more. Yeah. yeah. Put out more. Absolutely. What else? Uh, Sarah Johnson reached out to us today about the brew ruck, which shout out to Team Spearhead for giving us the inspiration for that. Yeah. But I'm stoked to see people in the community reaching out to us that what they can do. And we had a great time doing that. Yeah. So Bomber, you get a lot of credit for this, not only because you sort of spearheaded and put together the brew ruck we did here in Jack's Beach, but we've been talking about this now for over a month probably. And you've kind of said, we have an obligation as Goruck and Emily too, by the way, we have an obligation here as as Go Ruck in Jack's Beach. If we want to, if we want to promote people being engaged in their community and making a difference, then it has to start here. There's there's no other way. So if, if we, as an organization in Jack's Beach, aren't committed to supporting our community, if we're not out doing stuff and engaging in the community, then it's very hard for us to encourage anyone else to do the same. So um, you've been a big part of making sure that we're kind of delivering on our promise to do that. So I appreciate your your effort in doing that. Sure. Um, women's apparel, Jason. Ooh, timely. Go ahead. Yeah, so today, so I promised, I promised the women out there that we would have apparel in 2018. So proud to say, I mean, at this point, it's, that's, that's easy. Right? I mean, we're going to deliver it. It's, it's just sort of how much and what style types and quantity types and stuff like that. But today, the first two prototypes showed up. Uh, Lindsay is our fit block. So that's, that's going well. And there's a minor tweak or two on, it was two tops that showed up out of, out of two different fabrics and two different uses, but they both showed up and, you know. They were both pretty close. Both pretty close. Not, neither were perfect, but they were both were close. And, and by the way, there's this idea out there of some places, you know, everything is unisex and that doesn't work, right? I mean, we've know, been told, we've been schooled on that. We know the deal. I mean, that, yeah. guys' bodies are not the same as girls' bodies. So unisex can work for a, a piece or two with different sizes, you know, Chuck Taylors or the random sort of t shirt, but. When you really get kind of more technical and performance based, it's, it's got to be different. And so, you know, it's not the whole shrink it and pink it model. It's completely different fit blocks of what that's going to look like by fabric on mm -hmm. the women out there. So two pieces showed up today. They're, they're both really close. I would expect to see some, because I haven't seen the pants yet. We haven't seen the pants yet. But which are even harder than the tops, by the way, like yeah. getting the fit right on the bottoms yeah. is harder than the tops. So. As I've been told, nobody likes a camel toe. <laughs> so that's, <laughs> that's the thing. That's the thing, right? Hey, let's just get it out there. This is real, you know? So we're not making any yoga pants. In apparel, that's a big deal. So, <laughs> so that's, a, that's a harder thing. The, the tops are, tops are pretty close. You'll probably, we don't have the fabric on hand yet. You know, it takes time to order and stuff, but I would say you'll see it, you know, early summer. You'll see women's tops for sure. That's pretty cool. So I'll, yeah. I'm going to deliver on that promise. Uh, next thing is we have the Battle of the Rut Clubs. We also have 
911 coming up, a lot of other events. Would you care, Blaine, to share about some of the things that we're going to be doing as a community? Yeah, so in, kind of in keeping with the same theme, one of our big goals for 2018 is just to sort of, is to grow rucking. We want more people rucking more often in more places, and we want to support rucking really everywhere that it's happening whenever we can. And so whether that's a go ruck event that you know we're putting on and we're kind of putting the muscle behind, that's one aspect of it. But there are other rucking events that are happening out there around the country that people are you know of their own volition, putting their own time and effort into, and they're and they're getting them going. And um, and we want to support them because we that's we believe in rucking that much. So we are going to sponsor. We are a sponsor now of the Baton Memorial Death March. In in March we'll be out there. I think it's March 25th. We will be out in White Sands, New Mexico, sponsoring the Baton Memorial Death March. So if you're doing that, we look forward to seeing you there. If you haven't signed up yet, you should sign up because we're going to be out there. It's going to be a blast. We'll have a booth there in the gym where all the signups are happening. We'll get ourselves a nice piece of real estate at the campsite, which will no doubt be the most fun piece of real estate at the entire campsite. Go Rut camps pretty well. On, uh, yeah, on White Sands Missile Range. So uh, get, get to that event. It's going to be a blast. We're going to kind of capture some of the stories. If you haven't been there, it's... It's pretty epic terrain. There's still a few baton survivors that come out, which is just like really just eye-opening, like mind-blowing stuff to hear their stories. So we will be there. Um, we're going to sponsor the uh, the Nine Line Foundation, our friends at Nine Line Apparel up in Savannah. They have a 5K, 10K they do every year in May, and we're going to be a sponsor of that event. So we will be there supporting that. We want people to come out and you know participate in the the event, raise money for a good cause. They support severely disabled veterans getting them in like special mobility homes and some of those other things. Um, but we, we also want to get people out kind of rucking the event. So if you have a ruck and you don't feel like running, if you hate running like everybody else. Running sucks. Bring your ruck to the, the Nine Line event in May. I think it's May 19th in Savannah. Sign up for that. Meet us in Savannah. We'll have a great time. I think the uh, we have some great friends at a brewery right there. What's the name of that brewery? Veterans United? Veterans. No, that's, no, that's here. Veterans United. Oh, uh, God, I'm sorry. Service Brewing. Service Brewing, yeah. So they'll be there. So a lot of good fun there. We're going to more or less crash the Winter Beach Run coming up January 21st here in Jack's Beach. So we've got a ton of people from HQ and from the community here locally. They're going to be rucking the 5 and the 10 mile for the Winter Beach Run. So there are a lot of examples like that, but that's just kind of part of our part of our strategy is to support rucking every every single place we can. Anywhere it makes sense, we want to be out there in the community face to face if we can be but supporting it in any way we can so there's a lot of charity rucks that we have going on that we're you know those will be listed on the go ruck scars page yeah there you go so scars the px but i mean if we can donate a ruck for a raffle if we can be there in person to support it if we can encourage the local go ruck community to get out there and participate like that's that's easy for us and it's something that we i think we have an obligation actually to do we have a responsibility to do that now if, if we want to grow rucking the way that we say we do so lots of that the, you know, I always say the best part of HQ is Monster, and the best part of Goruck is community. And I want to give a shout out to the community this week because there was a GRT who lost a son, and another one has been one month old infant in NCIU, and how the community supported them and reached out to them, that means a lot to me. Yeah, so it's, it's amazing how you can live next door to somebody for four years and like maybe wave to them and never even know them. You live next door to them in the same community, right? But then someone that becomes part of the Go Ruck community, and I saw this all the time at Team RWB too, you don't even know them. They live in a different state. You've never even met in person. And they say, hey, I'm coming to town. Is there a great place to get a workout or whatever? And it's like, I'll pick you up at the airport. It's, it's amazing. We take for granted sometimes how powerful our community is in that, I mean, there are people that we've never met. We don't even know them, but they can say they're a GRT and they're coming to Jacksonville, or they're coming to Tampa, or they're coming to wherever. And people are like, hey, I'll, I'll pick you up at the airport. You want to crash at my, on my couch today? You want to, you know, whatever. It's, that's pretty amazing to see that happen. It so. is. What what I hear got? some chirping over here. Oh, oh Jenny. Here. Come on. Come on. Jenny and Penny. We got special and guests. Monster. We got special guests. Come on, let's go. Everyone. That's we got, we got a monster here. All right. Jenny. Jenny. And Penny. Gonna, we got to do a little family time here at the very end of the show. Penny, say hello. I don't think, I don't think the Go Rug Nation has met Penny yet on the Go Rug show. This is, oh goodness, baby. Hey, Jenny. <laughs> so all the all the references to my wife that have caused the GRTs to say it like the ten times game. in a row. My wife, Jenny, my, my wife, wife Jenny. my wife, my wife. Look how beautiful my <laughs> wife is. How kind she is to come pick me up from work because I don't have my bike. 
and to bring our beautiful daughter. <laughs> hey, Penny, what's up, sweetie? Wow, yeah, Jenny, say hi to everyone. Hi, everybody. I was just watching this at home, actually. How are we doing? How's the episode today? It's pretty good. Pretty good today? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I thought sure you'd be done by now, so I didn't mean to crash your party. Sometimes it, it drags on a bit. Yeah, you I've know, heard the that feedback. At the end. You're like seven minutes over. That's I like heard that feedback, you know. It's all good, right? All right. If you don't like it, turn it off. However, <laughs> it's easy. However, if you turn it off, you might miss what's coming next. Yeah, like Penny. Like Penny. <laughs> My goodness, how would you have liked to have missed Penny? Joke's on you. All right. All right, with the family here, maybe that's a good place to leave it. We'll see you guys next time. Adios. Bye.